Before we begin, I have to say that Cold Mountain is one of my favorite movies of all times about the American Civil War. It's a movie that's fairly historically accurate and just gets a lot of things right in general. The movie itself is actually based on a novel by Charles Frazier. A novel that in itself is very well historically researched and very well written, which probably credits to why the film itself is very historically accurate. Near the end of the American Civil War, Union troops lay siege to Petersburg. During this siege, Union troops decided to tunnel underneath Confederate fortifications. These tunnels were then filled with explosives, explosives that created a huge crater. This is where the movie begins. Unlike what's being shown here, Union troops actually began the assault on Confederate positions hours after the explosion took place. Both Confederate and Union troops can be seen using the 1861 Springfield rifled musket. However, this was the standard issued rifle for Union troops, not Confederate troops, who used the Enfield rifled musket. It's a turkey shoot! What? It's a turkey shoot! They run themselves into a hole! Hell! Busted! In 1864, the South was already running low on supplies. So, although I'll admit it looks cool, Throwing your musket like a javelin really makes no sense instead of just reloading like a normal person. The war itself is actually a small part of the movie. Cold Mountain is more of a love story between Inman, a deserter of the Confederate Army, and Ada, a girl whose father dies and leaves her alone on a farm. And so the movie itself focuses more on the home front of the South during the American Civil War rather than the battlefield itself. There's a war on. Get off my land! Your boys come home? Ain't seen my boys in four years. They're out fighting other boys, not old men and women. So you won't mind if we look around? Because we think they're here. We think you've got them hit up somewhere. What I got to give you? A chicken? A lamb? Sure. Thing is, you've only got one barrel, and there's five of us. That's not a fair fight. and deserters. I could confiscate this farm and everything on it. Every plate, every sheep, every little pet of the chicken shit. I could confiscate your old lady's asshole. So don't you offer me no bird. The villains in this movie are the Home Guard. The Home Guard are portrayed in this movie as people that enjoy torturing and looting innocent civilians. The Home Guard was a very real thing during the American Civil War, but the problem is that in this movie, they're portrayed as a little bit over the top. A group of people more in line with what the Home Guard did in this scene are the Bushwhackers. Bushwhackers were people that took advantage of the lawlessness during the American Civil War and exploited civilians both in the North and South for looting and raiding. There's a rooster. 
He's a devil, I'm sure of it. I go near him, and he is at me with his spurs. He's Lucifer himself. I despise a flogging rooster. Oh, no, I wouldn't have... My name's Ruby Dews. I know your name. Yeah, so I actually went on YouTube and uh, searched up how to kill a chicken. And it turns out that, no, it's not really possible to rip off a chicken's head with your bare hands. Usually you'd use a pair of scissors or a knife. Although if any of you watching can do it, send me a video. I'd pay a dollar for an egg. What are runaway slaves gonna do with a Confederate dollar? I've got no quarrel with you. Hey! I'm out near the Cape Fear River. Now that we know that these are runaway slaves, why would they have shown themselves earlier to a Confederate soldier? Getting better, soldier. Seems that way. I wouldn't hurry. War's almost done. Don't need your help to lose it. <laughs> By far, the biggest error in Cold Mountain historically is the issue of slavery. In any movie about the Civil War, slavery is a topic that is brought up one way or another. Cold Mountain more or less tries to ignore the issue of slavery altogether. Southerners are portrayed as either all or most anti-war or anti-slavery. And so whenever slavery is brought up, there's something missing. It feels as if something is incomplete. I completely understand if the directors of Cold Mountain did not want to address the issue of slavery, as slavery is a very sensitive topic. But the real problem is when the directors decide to revise history and change it to something that we want to hear. And the directors did this by making everybody against the war or against slavery, which Although there were people that were against slavery and against the war in the South, it was not to the extent as seen in this movie. At the end of the day, Cold Mountain is a fantastic movie that pays attention to detail. All of its historical inaccuracies are more or less very, very minor. It's definitely a movie worth watching again and definitely a movie I recommend. Oh yeah, it also has a fantastic soundtrack. <laughs> Traveling through